What do you guys think of Chilling Rain? Chilling Rain has been out now for almost a couple years. It's almost two years old. It came out in June of 2021. It came out really during the middle of this giant boom in Pokemon, right? We had Shining Fates come out as a specialty set. There were some main series set delays. Uh, Shining Fates had a lot of issues with finding product. Anywhere near MSRP, things were being bought up like crazy. Then Battle Styles came out in May, and that really started to slow down main series sets because a lot of people weren't overly excited about Battle Styles but Chilling Rain had a bunch of different alternate arts in it that people got really excited about. It had the legendary birds in alternate art form. It has that beautiful Blaziken VMAX. And Chilling Rain was very, very heavily produced in multiple waves. So if you remember correctly, it had this huge, gigantic wave number one, which had a lot of attention. But even when Chilling Rain came out, a lot of people were starting to look forward, right? They were looking forward to Evolving Skies, which was coming out in August of 2021. A lot of people were starting to pay attention to that. And not only that, they were also paying attention to the 25th anniversary set celebrations, which kind of left Chilling Rain a little bit in the dust, a little bit behind, and it didn't really have this gigantic start that I think a lot of people anticipated when it originally came out. So there was quite a bit of product still available for a lot of people to purchase, and then all of a sudden it got hit with a giant wave number two, uh, which was approximately the same size as wave number one, resulting in Chilling Rain booster boxes to drop to about $80 a piece. We also had an instance at the end of 2021, which we haven't experienced since, where there was just this massive upheaval of printed product, reprinted product all over the place. We got two additional waves of Evolving Sky, so a Wave 2 and a Wave 3. We had Wave 1 of Fusion Strike, and then in January we had, uh, January of 2022, we had a second wave of Fusion Strike. We had more Battle Styles booster boxes come out. We had this massive second wave of Chilling Rain, and also three separate waves of celebrations, as Pokemon did whatever they could to make sure that they could hit demand. Now, we haven't really had anything like that, uh, anything like that reprint ever since that period of time. And now it's kind of at the point where booster boxes are very difficult to find. Distribution centers are pretty much sold out of every single booster box that's in modern Pokemon. And if you want to order booster boxes, uh, you have to pay a premium. Now, I don't know if they're going to reprint anything or not. It wouldn't surprise me if Pokemon reprinted older sets. Anything is fair game when it comes to Pokemon. But Chilling Rain has been the topic of a lot of conversations when it comes to Pokemon lately. And because of this, Chilling Rain is really rising like crazy. Did you know Chilling Rain is actually the hardest set in the entirety of the Sword and Shield block, probably in the entirety of Pokemon outside of maybe like Shining Fates, to master. The master set in Chilling Rain is ridiculously difficult because it has the uh, most amount of Ultra Rares out of every set that's ever been printed in Pokemon. Just a ridiculous amount of Ultra Rares in Chilling Rain, a ridiculous amount of alternate arts. There's over a hundred in Chilling Rain. The second most difficult one to master would probably be Evolving Skies with the amount of Ultra Rares that are in both of those sets. Pull rates not being overly fantastic. Obviously, you're only going to pull anywhere between seven and eight ultra rares per, per booster box with no guarantee of anything. No trainer gallery, no radiant cards, which really makes it seem like these booster boxes are not worth opening as much. But the booster boxes are really starting to gain a lot of ground. And part of that, most of that, probably due to influencing, uh, probably due to content creators, people who are sitting on massive loads of chilling rain, kind of piping it up, hyping it up a little bit, but also in part because there's just no stock out there. There's no stock available and because there's no real new re new releases going on, yes, we have Crown Zenith, but outside of that, not a whole lot of collection boxes. We're not used to this, and we don't have another set coming out until Scarlet and Violet Base, which isn't until the end of March. So people are looking at where they want to open up Pokemon product and kind of add to their collection, and a lot of people are looking at Chilling Rain because it has uh, just kind of fluttered right around MSRP to the point now where it's starting to kind of creep up above MSRP. So we're going to look at Chilling Rain today to kind of see if it's continued its trend, and a lot of really interesting interesting takes when it comes to Chilling Rain. So I am interested in hearing what your thoughts are when it comes to this set, how it ranks, what you think it's going to do in the long term. If you enjoy the content, please hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment. It goes so far for the algorithm. It really helps spread the channel, share the channel. We are uh, launching to 100k subscribers and I owe it all to you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Even if you don't hit any subscribe button or like or comment, I appreciate you just taking the time to watch. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we're looking at the past three months of data because it's been a couple months since we looked at Chilling Rain, but just looking at what it's done over the past three months, you can see relatively flat right around that $110 mark until the beginning of December. So over the past two and a half months, it's done huge gains over the past two and a half months alone. You're looking at about 30% uh, gains over the past couple months.
months as stock has continued to dry up. So in December, middle of December, it really started shooting up. And you can see currently sitting at a, a three-month high of 133.13. It's probably an all-time high, really, when Chilling Rain first came out, it was selling, uh, first came out, it was selling between 120 and 130. Uh, this is about uh, a forever high for Chilling Rain. It just continues to climb upwards. We see that market price of 133.49 currently. That is actually going to go up a considerable amount over the next week or so because the lowest available prices right now on TCG Player are above MSRP, right around that $145 mark. So it's gotten to the point now where Chilling Rain is really selling for about MSRP plus shipping and continuing to go upwards. So unless a reprint comes and that reprint window is starting to close, we might see Chilling Rain continue to climb more and more. If we look at the actual singles in the set, outside of the Chilling Rain booster box, there's not a whole lot of movement when it comes to seal products. Those checking blisters really starting to take off a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, uh, Elite Trainer Box is selling right around MSRP. Build and Battle Box is well below MSRP. If you're looking for Chilling Rain Build and Battle Boxes, uh, you can find them for a, a case for about $140, which is 10 Build and Battle Boxes. Uh, so $140, $14 a piece, which is a really good deal for those Build and Battle Boxes. Outside of that, Sleeve Boosters, just above MSRP. Booster Packs right around $3.50. Not a whole lot of movement when it comes to those sealed products outside of those booster boxes. But that's because Chilling Rain is still in a lot of product and in a lot of product that isn't necessarily uh, in demand for a lot of people like Lucario boxes and uh, those uh, V-Striker tins that are of the first print run. Uh, a lot of those Chilling Rain pro uh, booster packs still in those where a lot of people are kind of focusing their attention on booster packs when it comes to Evolving Skies and Crown Zenith. But look at what Blaziken VMAX has done. This is one of my favorite alternate arts in the entirety of Sword and Shield. You can see with the Inteleon line kind of hanging out on the rooftop there. It looks like they're practicing karate. It looks so cool. Blaziken with the skyline in the background. Really, really cool looking card. Lots of colors that just kind of pop out at you. Uh, you can see at the beginning of November, middle of November, it was right around 147.46, which is still uh, decently high for this alternate art. And that's really when a lot of alternate arts started to creep up in price points. But Blaziken VMAX has continued its ascent and continued its climb all the way up to the middle of December where it kind of leveled off a little bit for about a month and then at the end of January started peaking up a little bit more sitting at 167.96 that's an all-time high for this specific card but also some decent gains over the past three months where it's gone up uh, about a little over 15% over the last couple months. Not every Now, this can't be said for every Chilling Rain alternate art, and really alternate arts in general have started to take a step back. If you look across the board, a lot of these alternate arts that saw massive growths in November, we talked about this multiple times in videos saying these prices don't seem legitimate. They don't seem like they will hold. So be careful. Don't FOMO. Don't watch these prices skyrocket and then buy at the height. I do think they're going to cool off a little bit, and that's really what's happening with a lot of different alternate arts really across the entirety of the Sword and Shield block. Galarian Moltres has dropped a little bit in price. You can see it hit a three-month high at the beginning of January of 136.78 before dropping back down. Not at its three-month low yet where it hit 122.43 in the middle of November, but you can see it dropped down to about 125 in the end of January before coming back a little bit, sitting at 130.77 currently. That gold Snorlax, uh, this is such a cool card, and it's such an outlier when it comes to those golden cards from Chilling Rain because it continues to increase increase in price and a lot of the golden cards throughout the sword and shield block are not performing well you look at cards like that surviper uh you look at cards like even giratina some of those v-star cards those golden v-star cards just not doing really well uh this snorlax continues to perform extremely well hovering right around a three-month high right now it's sitting at 87.61 just off of its three-month high which it hit at the end of january of 88.32 but still you're looking at about 20 percent above its three-month low which it hit at the end of november of 73.45 this zero or a V, another one of those really cool alternate arts that continues to climb even after its initial spike in November. You can see it was hovering right around 65, 65 at the end of November. That is a three-month low now for this card, despite being at a one-year high for that card at the end of November. And you can see it's continually, uh, continually growing uh, over the past three months. You can see at the end of January, it hit a one-year high of 87, 61. It's kind of leveled off there right now, so we'll see how it continues to perform. The Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX, this one also 
still continuing to climb despite its ascent that it hit in November. It's three month low, 53.64. That was in the middle of November. It leveled off a little bit pretty much from the end of November all the way to the end of January and then saw a massive spike after that. So it's about, you're looking at about 20% growth over the past three months, sitting at 63.92 currently. That's a three month high for that card. The Galarian Zapdos has been really all over the place. You can see a giant spike that happened at the end of November where it jumped right around $62 before coming back down and hitting about that $55 mark, just barely above its $50.92 low that it hit in November, in the middle of November. Then it jumped up again to a three-month high of $65.10, which it hit at the beginning of February. Now it's backed off just a smidgen, but it's sitting at $64.27, so still way closer to that three-month high than that three-month low. Really cool-looking card. Really got that Roadrunner uh, feel to it. The Ice Rider Calyrex V Max continues to climb, so a lot of these alternate arts continuing to climb despite other alternate arts in the market. If you look at like Rayquaza V Max from Evolving Skies going way down, uh, Chilling Rain continues to climb. Uh, the Ice Rider Calyrex V Max hit a three month low in the middle of December or in the middle of November at 41.93 and just continued to climb after that. So you're looking at about 25% in growth over the past three months, sitting at 53.56 currently. That's a three month high for Ice Rider Calyrex Galarian Articuno, a very, very cool looking card, not as expensive as some of the other ones in Chilling Rain and really the alternate arts in general. You can see it hit a three month low also in the middle of November of 44.74, spiked a little bit closer to that $50 mark and then backed off closer to that three month low in the middle of December before starting to rise again. It hit a three month high at, in the middle of January of 53.28. It's backed off a little bit, but still closer to that three month high than that three month low sitting at $50.31 currently, but actually starting to trend in the downward direction. The Galarian Rapid SV, this is a beautiful artwork card. Not a whole lot of movement in this one over the past three months. You're looking only about a 10% difference between its three month high and its three month low, but it's done the majority of its gains over the past month. You can see in the middle of November, it hit 42.94. That was a three month low for that. Then it started to spike up a little bit to that 45.50 mark before dropping back down in the middle of January. It got right back to its three month low and then saw this epic rise, this giant incline uh, over the end of January, would hit a three month high of 46.56. Again, only about 10% difference over the past three months. Uh, it's backed off a little bit, sitting at 45.93 currently. The Galarian Slow King saw a huge ascent in November. You can see, look at how high it was climbing. Hit a three month high in the end of November of 41.85. And this is one of those cards we talked about, which just didn't make a whole lot of sense uh, how high it was going. And now it's backed off a lot. It's lost about 10% over the last couple months. You can see it's sitting at a three month low right now of 37.52. The Bliss EV also saw a little bit of an ascent uh, at the end of 2022. You can see it hit a three month high uh, at the end of December where it hit uh, 35.47. That was coming off of the three month low that it hit in November of 30.33. So you're looking closer to 20% on this one uh, between its three month high and its three month low, but then it started to back off a little bit and you can see it's trending downward sitting at 32.99 currently right in between its three month high and its three months three month low. Shadow Rider Calyrex V, kind of the same thing as what we saw with the last couple, and this just goes to show you that not all alternate arts are viewed the same. Some of them continue to rise in popularity due to demand. Uh, some of them do not, and Shadow Rider Calyrex V is one of those examples of a card that does not. It hit a three-month high at the end of November of 32.94, about 10% higher than its three-month low, which it hit in the middle of November, so it gained about 10% over the span of about two weeks and then stayed relatively consistent for the next month before really dropping down. At the end of January, it hit a three month low of 29.64 and then started to climb back up a little bit, sitting at 29.86 currently, uh, but much closer to its three month low. It might even go down a little bit more. Tornadus V hasn't done a whole lot since that epic ascent that it had. In November, it jumped all the way up uh, close to that $32 mark and then kind of stayed consistent all the way till the end of January before it hit a three month high of 33.02. Now it's back off a little bit more, sitting at 31.78 currently. Some decent gains on this one. You're looking at about 25% over the past three months, but most of the damage was done at the end of November and it's stayed relatively consistent since then. The full art trainer that people are talking about the most in Chilling Rain is Clara. It'll be interesting to see with the spike and rise and a lot of these Japanese full art trainers, how that translates to the Sword and Shield block to see if any of those full art trainers start spiking in price or Sun and Moon or XY. Some of those full art trainers really cool, really desirable. We saw 
epic ascents of those before, uh, but a whole lot of drops since those giant buyouts that happened a couple years ago. Claire has just been one of those cards that's been all over the place. You can see a three-month high that was hit at the beginning of December of 2750 before dropping to a three-month low of 2574, really looking at only about 10% differential over the past three months, sitting at 2640 currently. Uh, and I think this is the last one that we're going to look at. Ice Rider Calyrex V, kind of the same as what we saw with those other few alternate arts that we just looked at. Hit a three-month high at the end of November, 2356, only translated about 10% differential that we've seen over the past three months, and it's mostly been declined, trending downwards. It hit a three-month low at the end of January of 2124, gained a little bit of a, it back, but still sitting at 2150 currently, closer to its three-month low than its three-month high. So those are all that we're going to be looking at for Chilling Rain, but a very interesting set to continue to keep track of moving forward, especially with the buzz in alternate arts. I'm also really, really excited for the release of Scarlet and Violet to see what these art rares start doing to the market when it comes to some of these alternate arts. It'll be very, very interesting to keep track of. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Like I said, if you do, hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. It goes a really long way for the algorithm. Most importantly, though, you guys are amazing, and I just want to say thank you again for taking the time out of your day to just watch the video, listen to me ramble. I love this stuff, and I love talking to you guys about Pokemon, making sure that you spend your collection dollars uh, at the most prime position that you possibly can. It's not about money. Uh, it's about making sure that you can continue the longevity of the game, and you're not going to want to continue the longevity of the hobby if you're throwing money away uh, at cards when they're at their peak, right? We want to try and find cards when they're at the lowest position, so that way we can use that to best make the decisions when it comes to spending our collection dollars. So thank you so much for everything, guys. I will talk to you soon. Until next time, peace!